Power 106, it's about eight minutes before eight o'clock, and in a few moments we'll be calling what I love to call those toothless rednecks in Kentucky. <laughs> this time, Homer Luster. And he was on America's uh, Funniest uh, Videos. And Homer can make the sounds of a diesel truck and of a train coming at you and stuff like that with his own lips. And we'll be calling him and putting him on the air live for you in our tabloid Tuesday. It's Power 106. Good morning, Lisa May. Good morning, Jay. It's 7.53, seven minutes before 8 o'clock on the Golden State Freeway. The southbound 5 around the 170. There was a problem earlier with a stalled car in the left lane. That's been cleared off the freeway now, but the southbound Golden State is still a very slow trip from the 118 on down towards the Hollywood Freeway. Rudy Grande has been involved in some excitement. Let's go airborne. Well, it looks like another police chase has come to an end. All right in the middle of morning drive, we had the San Bernardino Freeway plagued with the car diving in and out of the lanes. Westbound side of the 10 is very heavy now from the 605 over to the 710. The car that was being chased by police had been running down the San Bernardino Freeway and exited at Del Mar. All the activity now just north of the San Bernardino Freeway. Rudy Grande, Power 106. If you're making way northbound on the Harbor Freeway, right before the four level, there's a stalled out mail truck. That's blocking the right lane. Quite a bit of slowing as you come up from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. This Metro Traffic Report is brought to you by Monroe Shocks. Get a $10 rebate on Monroe Magnum 2 Shocks. Magnum 2 gives your light truck an automobile-like ride, and it's available at Magic Muffler Auto Care Center her in Thousand Oaks, Simi, and San Fernando Valley. I'm Lisa May at 754 on Power 106. Hi, this is Jay Thomas. Many people say to me, how did you make it in the entertainment industry? A tremendous amount of butt kissing. I could not dial a simple phone number and improve my life. What is that phone number? 1-800-DIAL-D-I-A-L-U-E-R. Many people are saying, what? Wow, what'd he say? If you, if, well, English is a second language for you. Give him a call. 1-800-DIAL-D-I-A-L-U-E-R. UEI, seven locations, Santa Ana, Mid Wilshire District, Huntington Park, San Diego, Van Nuys, and Long Beach, accredited by the U.S. Department of Education, the state of California. Dial 1 800 DIAL UEI, electronics and microcomputer repair, automated office assistant, word processing manager. They're there to help you. It does work. Thousands are calling us. Job placement services, student services, financial aid if you need it. Dial 1 800 Dial, D-I-A-L-U-E-I. -E well, it's a beautiful morning, it's just around the corner. Hello? 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 Hello, is Homer home, please? Hello? Trying to figure out which end of the phone. Uh, I hear, I hear the voice. Somebody uh, was having a good time. What, what place is this? This is Houstonville, Kentucky. Oh man. Houstonville. Hey, the, the, the thing, the thing's ringing, Bob. <laughs> get what the hell? What the hell is? Lucy, mate, get that damn thing. Get my gun. Thing's making a noise. Let's try again. God forbid. Well. Hi, Homer, please. Uh, he can't do the chainsaw right now. He can't do the chainsaw right now? No. I didn't ask anything yet. Hi, I, were you talking to someone about Homer doing a chainsaw? Yeah, it was been going on all morning. Oh, hey, Martha? Uh-huh. Uh, somebody's wanting home. Okay. Hi, this is Jay Thomas and Monica Brooks. We're in Los Angeles. Hello? Yeah. Hi, we're in Los Angeles at Power 106 Radio. We're sorry to bother you, but uh, uh, there's, this story did come over about... I guess your son, who makes the sounds of diesel trucks and motorcycles, and I didn't know he did chainsaws. Yeah, that's his. Uh, that's what he's known for, is the chainsaw. Now uh, he's been bothered a lot this morning by a lot of people. Or? Well, he's not up yet. He's he's uh, gotten a scuffle with his neighbors. A neighbor hit him in the jaw, so uh, he's kind of having trouble with his jaws. What uh, I've a been neighbor? Telling. A neighbor hit him in the jaw, and he can't make his chainsaw sound. Yeah. What, what why happened? Why did the neighbor hit him in the jaw? Well, they kissed him. Before. Some of the kids, some of the little kids, I reckon, you know, told that he'd throw rocks at him or something, and so the neighbor come over and hit him, and so, uh... See, how old is Homer? Homer's 28. What would Homer be doing <laughs> throwing rocks at kids? Well, that's what we know, too, but... Now, have you called the police about this? Oh, yeah, we went and got a warrant for him, yeah. Yeah, and the guy knocked him right... So Homer's, like, laid out, huh? Well, he's not hurt, you know. The, uh, we, took it... him to, uh, we went with him to the emergency room, and yeah. he's... They said he's not hurt. He might, you know, his jaw will be swelled or sore for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you, do you make any noises now that Homer's not uh, active for a while? You, what, how did Homer learn to make these noises? Uh, I, I thought sort of 
to thank you, honey, from his dad, because his dad does a few of them. And is, so his I, is his daddy home right now? Well, he won't do it for you. He's home, but he won't do it for you. Why not? <laughs> he don't do them like Homer does. Well, but, Homer just breaks into a chainsaw like like in any, like in a, in a se drop of a hat? <laughs> well, something like that. Uh-huh. Well, you sure Homer wasn't making a dirty noise at the neighbor? The neighbor popped him right in the mouth, huh? Uh, no, because I was there. I was the one who went outside when the neighbor came over. So yeah, no I see. Oh, yeah. And then after Homer was hit, did he make the sound of an ambulance? Uh, did he make the No, he, did, he didn't do that. He I just... You took him by yourself, and who are you? You're the mama. Yeah, I'm his oh, mother. Homer's, Homer's mom. mom. Uh -huh. well, I got okay. And Homer's been on TV doing this and everything, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been on TV two or three times. He's been on American's Funniest Videos or, or yeah, something. Funniest People. Yeah, uh -huh, that, Funniest that's, People. That's where we saw him, and we thought we'd, uh, you know, a lot of times you don't believe that these people exist, and then we call them up, and there they are. I'm so sorry to hear that Homer is uh, laid up with a swelled jaw. Yeah. But we'll call we'll call him back maybe next week. Is that okay with you? I guess it is. It might be okay with him. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, thanks very much. And you're, la you're Mrs. Luster? Uh-huh. Well, thank you. And you sure the old... I tell you what, if I gave your husband uh, $106, you think he'd make some noise for me? I can I can pay him for the noises. Well, he might if you paid him. Yeah, he yeah, go get more. him. Yeah, go <laughs> get him. Tell him I'll give him some God. money. Oh, you mean my husband? Your husband. No, no, I don't think you'd get him. I don't think you'd get him. I thought you'd go at home. Would you just yell to your husband, please, and ask him? I'll get him on for you, but yeah. I don't want him to yeah. yeah, we'll tell him. Yeah, get... get uh, Get, no, he, he doesn't hear me. He says nothing doing. Nothing, not even for money. No. Okay. Well, we'll call Homer back when his jaw goes down. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. You know, I'm a college graduate. Little did I know when I was, you know, working my way through college that I'd be talking to some guy who, no, he don't do chainsaws. That's how they answer the phone. He don't do chainsaws. So he gets locked in the jaw, right? And he can't do the chainsaw thing. I had wow. A Monica looked at me and said, this feels like Chino. No, I, I, <laughs> I, like I felt like I was in a foreign world. Unbelievable. That's Kentucky. Wow. I, I spent lots of time down in Kentucky, and I tell you what. It's a beautiful state. You think they're dumb on the phone. They are easy to talk into senseless sex. I can tell you that, okay? I, I used to go down there and go like this. You know, God told me. <laughs> <laughs> you should give yourself to me. <laughs> and then I'll make the sound of a vibrator. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Just kidding, alleged. It's Power 106, and good morning, and Homer Luster will be our special guest next week. When his, his jaw swelled, he throwed rocks at some boys and girls in the neighborhood. All right. Little did you know that Homer's a lawyer in that area, by the way. All right. Okay. It's Power 106, and we'll be back. Power 106, and good morning. Yes, good morning, Jay. This is Amal calling from the convenience store. Good morning, Amal. Oh, can you hold on? I have a customer. All right. Okay. Gallon of milk? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Oh, that is cottage... No, that is milk. I'm sorry. It looks like cottage cheese. It's been around for a while. Right. Yes, thank you for pointing that out to me. <laughs> Quick, Fatima, put this milk into a cottage cheese container. <laughs> yes, Jay. Yes, sir. Oh, business really sucks, Jay. What is it? Oh, it's very bad. What? From well, my business. What, what's wrong with your business? Well, it's just very bad, very slow. So I was thinking of doing a commercial. I've written a commercial uh -huh. that I wish to do on your program. But it's very expensive to buy a commercial on my show. Yes, I know. That is why I'm calling you to see if I can do it for free. You want to just do it for free? Yes. All right. So let's hear it first. Okay. You ready? Yeah. I'm crazy more speaking to you behalf on the uh, needless markup convenience store. Right. And have I cut the deal for you? Yeah. Why? Because I'm crazy. Yeah. Everything must go. Everything. This week and this week only a box of macaroni and cheese wants thirty-two dollars now. Thirty-one fifty. Right. Why am I doing this? Because I'm crazy. That's why. <laughs> My family coat of arms is a straitjacket. I'm nuts. <laughs> My boss said to me, Amal, I wish to have a fire cell. I said, what's a fire cell? He said, if you don't sell something, you are fired. <laughs> so everything must go. This week and this week only, I'm offering a two-for-one special. Yeah. Buy two of our microwave burritos, and you get to take home one, the Mexican immigrant who sweeps our floors absolutely free. 
Isn't that right, Ron? See, that is correct. I will go home with you. How can I do it? How can I give away human beings with the purchase of frozen Mexican food? Because I'm crazy. The curry has slipped off my noodles. I'm completely mistaken, I tell you. The first three people come down to the store and get a free Slurpee made out of government cheese. That's right, a free cheese Slurpee. I've had five of them already and I've got to take a cheese with something bad. But I'm holding it. Why? Because I'm crazy. Now, if you come on, if you come here before noon today, X Power 106 personality Mucho Morales will judge the is it meat or is it cake contest held by a dairy freezer. If you can guess if it's meat or cake, you get ten dollars off a TV guide. How can I do this? Because I'm crazy. This has been crazy, Morsing. If you can find lower prices anywhere, you're probably at another store. Oh. Well, what do you think, Jay? It is the recession, and we're taking anybody's money. All right. It's Power 106. Proprietor, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Now, the Jay Thomas Show on Power 106, LA's hottest music. Power 106, Jay Thomas, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I've been a virgin for 19 years. Yes. Now, I've been seeing this girl for a year and a half, and I've been playing it off and being cool like I did something, right? Yeah. She keeps saying I haven't did nothing, and I'm still a virgin, and she wants to do it, but I'm scared. What should I do? You're frightened of her, and you're a virgin. How old is the girl? The girl is uh, 20 years old. Well, I got to tell you, you're, you're not going to believe this, but once you start, start I, I think if you told her that you were a virgin, that yeah. she would find this so interesting that you would probably have the greatest first sex of your life. Oh, so you think I think you should be absolutely 100% honest with her. Tell her things like, be gentle with me, and the whole thing. And I want to tell you, she is going to turn you every which way but loose. Uh -huh. All right? This is what gals are looking for. They're looking for... I knew, Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a story that I... And I'll never forget this story as long as I live. I knew this, um, this young woman who was a, uh, a virgin. And she was a beautiful young woman, and she was, she was marrying a friend of mine. Yeah, and my friend was so nervous. He he had uh, he was so nervous. He didn't know what to do, and so he uh, became impotent. Even 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 in his own room by himself, he couldn't do anything. So he went to the doctor on the on the verge of the marriage to the beautiful virgin, and he said to the doctor, he said, "Look, I'm." So the doctor examined and says, "You're okay. You're just nervous." And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some tongue splints on you. So what they do is they put like you know those those tongue splints, and they wrapped him up. You know, yeah. so that, that it would be held in the right position for sex for sex making, right? Yeah. So he, they get they get into the bed together, and so they're in bed laying together, and so the girl is a little nervous. He's and the girl says, "Listen, I want you to know that I've never been touched. My sex organs never been touched by a man." He says, "Well, don't you worry. Mine's still in the crate." <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you are. I've helped another poor unfortunate at Power 106. And it's 722, 822 rather, 22 minutes after 8 o'clock this morning. And if you're making your way along the 405, the northbound side of the San Diego Freeway, right at the 710, there's a stalled cards blocking the left-hand lane of traffic, backing up the 405 through Long Beach. Up ahead, there was an earlier wreck around Western. That's also uh, slowed down the drive quite a bit on your way up towards LAX. For a look at the Ventura Freeway, we'll go to Rudy Grande. Gosh, do we have troubles on the Ventura Freeway, westbound just beyond Laurel Canyon. The car that stalled just moved over to the center divider, but you're moving slow, starting at Coenga Boulevard. The eastbound side of the Ventura Freeway, a lot of folks heading in the same direction between Winnetka and White Oak, and then from Van Nuys Boulevard over to the Hollywood Freeway. Rudy Grande, Power 106. A street alert's been issued in Fontana, Banana Avenue, south of Valley Boulevard. That area right there is being evacuated. In fact, Valley's being closed in both directions between Calabash and Cherry. That's due to a gas leak, and that's going to continue until about 10 this morning. This Metro Traffic Report is brought to you by Thomas Brothers. Don't leave home without the all-new 92 Thomas Guides for Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Every page is 30% bigger for faster lookups. You can read the difference in the 1992 Thomas Guides. I'm Lisa May. It's 820. On Power 106. I'm getting hungry. Hurry, offer ends Friday. It's Power 106. A shooting uh, of not anybody in Boys to Men, but of their road tour manager. Right. It could have been Boys to Men. Could have been any one of the guys. Could have been Hammer. They're on tour with him for all that uh, we know at this point. Well, what is the story? Well, um, there was uh, a robbery. They believe it was somebody inside connected with the tour. One of the because entourage. Well, it could have been because oh, they were yeah. trying to rob um, from the payroll. 
of everybody right. who's on the tour. And the tour manager just happened to stumble upon this robbery while it was in progress. And, you know, it could have been Hammer. It could have been any one of the guys from Boys to Men who walked in at that same time. One of the guys was shot in the knee, but somebody was killed. Uh, right. The tour manager killed outright. And they think they shot one of the... Um, uh, I guess one of the, the robbers, so they're looking for that. But you know, these entourage, they take the two floors of the hotel, right? So they think that maybe somebody a hanger on. Could have been. Have said, you know, yeah. it looks like easy pickings and the whole deal. Okay. Speaking of dead people, a tabloid Tuesday. <laughs> nice transition. The world's, the world's first all-nude funeral. <laughs> The world's first all-nude funeral, and this is from... Um, Everybody in their birthday suits. That's right. Everyone's in their birthday suits, even the preacher. They're nude. The dead guy's laid out. Look at him, how handsome he is with his big naked stomach there. And They, they cut the, the photo just below his Just navel. below his... That's right. <laughs> Free-spirited salesman Holton Davis was a fresh air freak who spent his spare time frolicking with friends at his favorite nudist camp. When happy-go-lucky Holton died, the funeral was crammed with mourners. All naked is the day they were born. My husband despised clothes. He couldn't stand the thought of burying himself in an old suit and tie, said Cindy Davis, his wife. Clothes-hating Halton had converted across Southern California's nudist scene for more than 25 years. In fact, people would see him nude without him seeing his face. They'd go, here comes Halton. They could tell that. Her I wonder how. He he's gone. Most of our friends were nudist, and so this is the way that he had to leave. <laughs> okay. Now, hey, who's There's playing? There's a law that says you have to bury somebody with clothes on. Hey, who's playing the organ? Was one of the things yelled out. <laughs> Hold it a second, Monica. Apparently, he's not the only stiff in the crowd. Okay. <laughs> A little weather? Whoa! It's going to be um, kind of hazy this afternoon. Highs downtown Los Angeles, about 75. Could go up to as much as 85 in the valleys right now. 64 degrees if you're in downtown Los Angeles. 61 in Long Beach, Jay. It's Power 106. Good morning. Power 106 and good morning in just a few moments. We'll be talking to more rednecks in North Carolina this time. The folks who have, instead of golf carts, llamas. Blake, do you see the way they clean your balls on Power 106? Y'all ready for this? Power 106, good morning. We're calling the um, golf course in North Carolina where they use llamas instead of um, golf carts. Good morning, Calamore Pro Shop. Wink speaking. Hey, uh, Wink. Hey. Jay Thomas, Power 106 Radio in Los Angeles. Jay, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, Monica Brooks is here with me. And, okay. And we, I guess, well, this was in every newspaper in the country. We talked about it earlier. Right. Cuddly caddies walk on new course, and it shows a couple of um, uh, llamas at the Talamore Golf Club with uh, your pro, John McDougal. You got it. Now, what are you, the assistant pro there? Yeah, I'm a teaching, teaching professional. Now, who decided... To have llamas instead of golf carts. <laughs> that, that came directly from, from the powers that be. Now, well, I mean, how did they... <laughs> llamas are not cuddly. They spit. Yeah, they well, spit. Llamas spit at each other. They don't spit. <laughs> they, they don't normally spit at human beings. I'm not saying they never have. Yeah. But they spit for territorial purposes. I see. Well, have, have any uh, llamas had like a spitting war, like around the like fifth tee? I mean, <laughs> this could be a little distracting. Well, we've got two males, and they like each other. Ah. <laughs> oh. So you've got. <laughs> so you've got the Liberace llamas, you huh? Got it. Yeah, you got good, the two. That's, that's a good choice of so words. So they spit at each other with big smiles on their faces, huh? <laughs> uh, I hate to be playing golf and a loogie war breaks out. Uh, right I would too. I mean, my back swing. Now, do they fertilize the course? Because they do they just sort of drop the poop. Uh, well, that's another nice thing about them that uh, they always do the business in the same spot. I'll be doggone. So you know, where is that? They pick. Well, they, we got different spots on the golf course, and they go directly to that spot when they're ready. So there you are now. Now you load the llamas up with the golf carts. I mean, with the golf clubs. With the golf bags. That's right. You sort of put it like a like a like a saddle kind. That's of thing? right. We got a saddle. We uh, each of them carry two bags. Yeah. And then we have a llama leader. Yeah. Or a llama guru or whatever to lead them around. Now, do you get a uh, uh, a free drop if if your ball lands in a pile of llama crap? Do you? How do you handle? How do you yeah, handle? 
How do you handle getting out of the llama crowd? We call that ground under repair. I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so it's, a, it's a free drop. Oh, that's wonderful. And we call them, you might like this, too. We have Yamaha golf carts, so we call our llamas llamahas. Llamahas, ladies. Well, what if you're standing there, all of a sudden you need your nine iron or whatever, and the llama decides it's time to go potty. Yeah. Well, and he takes off for his I could just see a guy who's having a great round chasing his llama to his <laughs> crap spot, you know? Well, we, we got that figured out, too. We give the guy the nine iron, and the guru just takes the llama to let him do his business. So how does he know? The guru? The guru, right. Who is that? So that's the llama leader. 